Day. Thanks for joining us for the Bendy Merch webinar by Guma. My name is David McApinlack and I'm the marketing director over at Stone Studio. Stone Studio is a marketing agency that specializes in graphic design, photo and video production, digital marketing and social media. Today, we're going to be focusing on how to improve your online presence and leveraging social media platforms to help your business grow. An online presence means to be present on the internet, whether that means a website, Facebook page, an Instagram page, a blog, or even a YouTube. Anything that can help a customer find more information about you or your business. Number one, you're searchable. It's everybody's first instinct to pick up their phone and Google, where's the nearest restaurant? Where's the best place to get your computer repaired? So what they do is they pick up their phone and search for it. Being online in every way increases your chances of being discovered. Number two, it helps communicate what your business is all about and also gives you a platform to communicate your brand's core values. Number three, what makes social media different is that it's actually a two-way communication. It allows customers and your audience to communicate directly to you and your business, and it helps you figure out what is working and what isn't. And with social media, you can receive instantaneous feedback about your products or services, whether it be by messages, comments, or even analytics. Primarily with Stone Studio, we focus on Instagram, Facebook, Google, and YouTube. With our team at Stone Studio, we use collaborative tools such as Dropbox so that we can share content and media very quickly. We use Google Drive. We also use WhatsApp to instantaneously communicate with our team as well as our clients. Our team at Stone Studio actually operates Guam Food Blog, which is a local food review page. Uh, and we go and review all the different restaurants and we work with over 100 restaurants here in Guam. And we also run Guam Grabs, which is a local buy, sell, and trade group, which has over 88,000 local members. And one of our passion projects is a lifestyle brand called Stone Styling.
Content is huge. For social media, it's really all about consistency. For Guam Food Blog, we try to post one to three times per day, and we feature content from local businesses and local restaurants. On Guam Grabs, it's a user-generated platform because people post things that they want to sell, they interact, they can get deals, and then they can also make trades with other people. So that's how the Guam Grabs platform works. All that content is really important because it allows those pages to grow. It gives people more reasons to interact with and comment and use the platform. Daily content is super important because it gives people a reason to interact with the page and it allows us to grow because more and more people can keep checking us out every day. Number one, establish a Google listing. This will allow customers and people to find you through Google search as well as find a map, directions to your business, get a contact number, an email. You can also find important information and reviews for your business. Number two, establish your social media. It's important to get your Instagram and Facebook set up so that people can find you on those platforms. Everybody is on it. Not identifying your customer or audience and creating messages that communicate to them. Put yourself in your customer's shoes. What motivates them? What drives them? What do they like to see? What inspires them? Once you figure that out, you can create content and messages that can resonate and speak to your audience. One of the techniques we use is something that we like to call content buckets or themes. For example, if you're a cultural artist, you can choose four different themes. Themes like pictures of your art, behind the scenes, Chamorro culture, and maybe island lifestyle. Another mistake that local businesses might make is not starting. Everybody starts at zero. Some people tend to get discouraged and unmotivated and they don't even start. Some people pay attention too much to the numbers when they think that they should be growing faster and they might end up thinking that they're failing. But it's important to remember that with their social media page, it's a journey. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Startup cost is free. You can learn how to grow your social media pages just by collaborating and working with other local businesses to help promote your brand and your business. Social media ads are cost effective. You can spend as little as $5 on a single post and reach hundreds and thousands of people. Social media is a two-way communication. Unlike traditional media where you might put an ad out in a newspaper, it might go out to thousands of people but you don't know what, how they're interacting with it and they cannot communicate with you directly. On social media, they can directly message you or your business page and you can instantaneously respond to their message, to their question or their inquiry so that they can purchase products from you or even avail of your services. Social media also gives instantaneous analytics so that you can find out exactly how effective your advertisement is. You can also create detailed advertisements that can be pinpointed to specific age demographics, gender, and geolocations. For people just starting out, it might be hard to figure out all the steps or what to do. Working with groups like us at Stone Studio can help cut the learning curve. We can help jumpstart your business by helping generate new sales, reaching out to new customers, and learning how to leverage these social media platforms. Lastly, it's convenient. By working with the pros, it allows you to be able to focus on running your business and not have to worry about what to post and how to do your marketing plan.
Buenas and half a day. I'm Angel. And I'm Ken. And we're the Paulinos, owners and founders of Katura Innovations. Together we help our clients to build digital experiences for their brands and create websites so they can sell their products and services online. We also create our own digital products such as casual mobile games, ebooks, e-learning, and interactive apparel. We're very excited to have you join us for today's Bendy Merch webinar. We hope that the tips and strategies that we're able to share with you today are strategies that you can implement in your own business or as you look for different strategies to be able to grow your business online. So let's jump right in. First, what is e-commerce? E-commerce is the ability to buy or sell products and services through the internet. Customers are looking to connect with brands that are able to offer products and services that they need at any point in time. It allows customers the option to be able to complete their transactions that exchanges customer data as well as financial transactions for you to complete and buy and sell your products. So how can e-commerce help your small business? Well, if e-commerce, when it comes to small businesses, there's uh, several ways that it can help your company. Uh, first and foremost would be your storefront, your website being open 24 seven during weekends, holidays, your customers can go in and just get more information about you, about your products and see if it fills their need. Another aspect of it is, is the actual, the, the reach of it, where you can uh, interact with customers in Scotland, in California, uh, even in Nigeria maybe. So this really helps you to, to grow your business and to see, and, and, and the other important part of it too, is to get that valuable information about what your customers are, are truly shopping for, really what resonates with them, and then that could help you uh, in future business strategies or launches. So yeah, there's so many things that e-commerce can help you and your small business to become uh, better acquainted and better uh, talking and attached to your customers. So let's think about in general, how a customer is interested in possibly buying your product. So the first thing that happens in the customer's journey is they're probably going to enter a search in Google, right? A lot of us, anytime that we have a problem that needs to be solved, maybe we're looking to fix a leaky sink. At that point, we're probably searching on Google. And so we'll be able to see different things from a video, maybe a DIY that we see on YouTube, um, or also just videos that are produced and on that company's website. Um, so at that point, it's really helping us, right? We're doing our part to educate ourselves, to become aware really of all the different options that are available to us to solve the problem. The second thing is after we've done that research, now we're gonna uh, move into the consideration process. In the consideration phase, we're looking at all the things that are very important to us that are going to drive the decision that we make to buy. At this point, it could mean, do I need the product right away? Are the features, right, everything that I need? Is there a warranty, right, that would help me, especially if I'm buying something like a TV, uh, maybe a sound system and things like that. There are definitely a lot of features that we're interested that's going to influence that part of the buy that are important to us as customers. And then the last part is the decision. At that point, you've done your research, you looked at a couple of things that are very important to you as the customer and how that helps to prioritize now what choices you're going to make when you're gonna buy. So let's think about Jose. Jose lives in California and is interested in picking up the latest Doni de Nancy. He enters in his Google search, hot pepper sauce made in Guam. At this point, there's gonna be different results that show up based on what he's typed in. He might see a video of a Pika challenge that might be from Instagram. Another is uh, something that maybe they saw on the Guam food blog at YouTube. 
um, of just features and products that people had probably used in their latest meal. The second thing he's going to do is take a look at all these different reviews and seeing, do they ship to California? If he lives in Tulare, California, he wants to know how much is it gonna cost for me to get my product within the week. At that point, the website will let him know if you do, in fact, ship to Tulare, California. There may be different rates that he's considering, um, and if he needs it in a week, that might mean he needs rush delivery. That's also gonna affect the price, because at this point, he really, really just wants that hot sauce. Maybe he might have a great event that's coming up that he's celebrating with his family next week, so, this Donnie de Nancy is going to be the star of the show. In the last part of it, he's going to decide now, I'm ready to purchase. At this point, he's decided that he needs his product right away, he wants it to be rush delivered, and he should be expecting it within one week. Jose will be able to find out this information from your website, from looking at your return policies, your shipping policies, that is really going to help him to make that decision. So at that point, once he's entered in his information, he's ready to go, and you're pro you've received the order, now it's on the side of you as the business owner to receive the order, to prepare it, to fulfill it, and make sure that it gets to Jose just in time for his next family event. So when you're starting out your e-commerce business, uh, the main important thing is to actually look at your product or service. Take a step back, and let's look at your product and service. Is this a physical product that you're providing for your customer? Maybe you have digital goods. Um, there may be even a time that you wanna have reservations for your clients. You, you need to go in and, and look at those things because this will help you to pick which kind of e-commerce solution is for you. So the second thing is to think about what you want your e-commerce site to do for the customer. What kind of interactions do you want them to have there? If it's a, a standard point of sale contact, maybe you need to schedule appointments with them. So the third thing is content. And as we know, content is king. Content provides more information for your customer so that they can make a better decision on your product. Content is anything from product shots to videos, um, how to's, uh, descriptions. There's a lot of things that content surrounds. You may have a blog that you want to put more of the behind the scenes in. And a lot of this content just really helps drive your message and your value, your worth of your products for the customer. Another important aspect to think about is business aspects or logistics. We, we often think about, okay, I wanna go in, I wanna sell this product online, but we forget that this is, is a business and that a lot of things that are traditionally in brick and mortar stores apply online. You, you, know, you have to think about the shipping and also to the return policies. What are some of these things that the client or the customer can see and be, be assured that they're gonna get that value product from you? Also too, you need to think about uh, inventory, how, how you're gonna manage that. So another important aspect to think about is processing and the logistics of business. These are very important because these drive your end up overall processes and how your customer is going to get the product. You need to think about your, your shipping procedures, your return policies, and also to your inventory management. And it's very important to keep those in mind. You know, it may not be exciting um, as going in and creating content, but having your business structure and all the procedures in place help you to be solid and a reliable source for your customer and uh, for future customers to come in and to know that you are a reliable seller. But also too, let's try and think about ways to, to keep connected with them, keep them in our ecosystem. So uh, one example would be to, to have a newsletter sign up. These are very uh, important because they allow you to be on top of mind with the customer. So on a one-to-one -one basis, and also too, you can introduce other features such as abandoned carts, reminders, or you know, thank yous. Um, you can send out discounts. You can you really be you can really be engaged with the customer and have a closer connection with them. Other items you need to consider when you're starting your e-commerce shop are what types of hardware you might need. The very first thing is you definitely want to get paid. And part of that is possibly getting a POS system, which is a point of sale system, 
Uh, maybe you need a mobile card reader for any time that you're doing other transactions outside of the website that still are able to link to the inventory that you have currently listed on the website. Um, now with this, there's different options, right, that a lot of our sm small business owners can use with regards to payment gateways. Here on Guam, a lot of our small business owners really rely on PayPal. And PayPal has been, you know, proven, it's been around a lot long, a lot longer, and also customers trust using PayPal, um, you know, for several years. And at some point, there are other payment gateways that you could consider. Um, one here on Island is also Vantiv. Um, so for those of you folks who may be considering, you know, other options aside from PayPal, that is another uh, payment gateway that you can consider. The second thing is as you receive these orders and they need to be prepared and, and packaged and ready for shipment, um, having something like a small printer where you can be able to print out your labels are gonna be key. One of the things that you'll find as you prepare your product for shipment is we really only have so many few options to be able to ship out our orders. And that's probably, you guessed it, the US Postal Service. Um, at this point, we want to make sure, right, that sometimes the line can be so long. Um, and so be able to bypass that, having your labels pre-printed and ready to go are going to help you to save a lot of time to get your products ready and shipped to go. Other things to consider as you start your e-commerce shop is to look at what options you have um, with regards to supply, your vendor, and also who's going to be processing the fulfillment of those orders. Now, there are a couple options that you can think of as you get started. The first, which is usual, is drop shipping. Um, so for example, with drop shipping, basically a customer is able to place an order on the website. You as the store owner notify the supplier that a product is ready to be shipped and the supplier will be able Able to um, either print and prepare the product, get it ready for packaging, and ship it directly to the customer. The next option is to be able to do print on demand. At this point, maybe you don't have um, the ability to print a large number of products at the, at the very start. So print on demand is another great option for those who are considering to keep their inventories low. Um, and also it's great if you're testing out products to begin with. Um, so do consider that as a possible option for you to, to get started um, and using some of those options. Another is to do possible white labeling. Now for some folks, right, it could very well mean that you already have the graphics, you have the, the artistry to be able to put on some of these products. And white labeling, basically, you're able to take these products that have already um, that are already available on the market that have not yet been branded. So you can look at a couple of the marketplaces or the supplier marketplaces that can be able to give you some options um, to be able to source the type of products that you're looking for to help you launch your product. And lastly, of course, when you build your website, you have to make sure that you invite your customers into your, into your virtual space. Now, it's always said, right, that if you build it, they will come. In this case, the virtual market is very, very crowded. And part of what that is, is you still want to maintain that really good, solid connection that you have with your customer. And so building the website also means that you still have to market it. You still have to push it out there and get your customers to come and shop with you on your website. Part of your promotional strategy when you launch your website is to also think about ways that you can connect with them. Now, this is promoting your website probably on your Instagram feed, on your Facebook channels, um, but it's really also looking at what other channels are available to still be able to reach your customers beyond just your website. So do lean into the social channels that are available, which our Mac Tech and Stone Studio team have talked about earlier. And for that, we definitely want to encourage you that now as you go ahead and launch your websites, that these are strategies that you can be able to use now or as you plan to launch your website. Good luck. So thank you so much, folks, for joining us and tuning in for today's segment on how to get started on e-commerce. We really hope that the tips and strategies that Ken and I shared with you here today are things that you can go ahead and start implementing in your business now or as you look forward to growing your business in the future. We're always available to be a solid resource here for you in the event you guys have any questions or you want to be able to connect with us. And with that, we definitely wish you the best and we hope you, st you stick around for the rest of the segments that we have for the Bendy Merch webinar um, and that you learn more than just a few things that you can be able to get started on as soon as possible. And again, yeah, thank you. And we look forward to seeing and shopping on your guys' own 
sites. Um, we hope to connect with you guys soon and definitely have a great webinar. Adios. Oh, yeah. Life could be a dream if I